A lot of people are concerned when you start talking imported campers that they're just not going to be up to the task. They think they come in, buy the container load, slap a different sticker on, put it out to market, that's it. Good mate here, Celso from Mars, reckons his stuff is seriously up to the task and he's put it to the test. 5,000 kilometres he's done in the last three weeks, coming from Melbourne all the way up here to the tip of Cape York. We've done Battle Camp Road, out to Weeper, done most of the telly track, hundreds of kilometres of corrugations, river crossings, right up to the very top, parked on the beach, right at the tip of Australia. How is it held up? I haven't seen him put a spanner to it yet, let's put it that way. Let's go and have a closer look at some of the features and see why this thing's done as well as it has. One of the biggest things that Mars tries to push is making camping a simpler experience. Not having you worry about whether or not your camp is going to make it down that track or fighting with it just to set up camp for the night. The way they've done this is by putting a lot of intelligent design into the little features that most people overlook. For example, the kitchen, they've revamped it. Ditch the old clunker cooker and they've gone for a high-end gas unit that isn't going to rattle around on all the corrugations. It's freed up more storage space as well, giving you more room for cutlery and cups. Underneath, the suspension is your typical independent twin-shot coil spring design. The guys from Mars have actually bumped it forward a couple of inches and it's done a couple of things. The first thing is it's lightened up the ball weight making this a pretty good option if you're towing with a coil sprung SUV, like a Prado or a Ford Everest. The other thing it's done is freed up storage space. With that extra space, they've been able to put in a second additional battery, which gives the Mars a huge capacity, allowing you to keep all those vital accessories running even longer without having to fire up the four-wheel drive or crack out the solar panel. Now we've not long finished up the telly track and there's a couple of things that have made this pretty stout. One of the big things is it's obviously got a lot higher ground clearance than some of the upper offerings on the market. Of course up front it allows plenty of articulation with a full polyblock hitch as well. Now as it's a forward fold there's a couple of bedding options too. Of course there's the main one, fold it over, you've got a big bed set up there for mum and dad. But when the little kids are coming along too, the lounge area actually converts down into a second bed. Or in the case of cell, so you can chuck your best mate Phil there too. Of course, there's a privacy screen too, so he doesn't have to see any your jocks getting dressed. One of the biggest selling features for Mars too is it includes all the bells and whistles, like the big boat rack. Of course, it's great for your tinnies, but you can put bulkier items up there, like kayaks or push bikes too. And if you're going to do a tougher trip like we've done, a couple of hand tools, a few bolts, off it comes, and you can go down tighter tracks. Now I mentioned before that it's got the big gas cooker, but one of the things I really like is plenty of storage space. Celso has actually managed to sneak a Weber barbecue in and fired up a couple of kebabs for us already. The guys from Mars aren't known for sitting on their hands and I reckon there's a few ideas twirling around in Celso's head already. Now the boys don't know yet, but we're planning another trip next year. I'm going to see what they bring see how hard it's going to go and see if I can break this one. There's no doubt that Mars is one of the most polished campers I've come across, but when word gets out about how bulletproof these things are, I reckon you're going to start seeing a few more around the campfire. <laughs>